Well, hello, shiny, crafty people. Tim Totten here, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to bring you a review of something that I just bought at a store, one of these handheld sewing machines. Would you believe I've seen these for 20 plus years and have thought about, wow, I wonder if I should buy one of these. And then I've always figured, why would I want one of these? And do they even work? And I've heard bad things about them. Well, I thought today I would help you by going ahead and buying one of these. I got this one at Ollie's for all of seven dollars and 99 cents oh, price tags over here like seven bucks eight bucks basically at ollie's discount and um i thought we'd try it out and that way you'd see if it's a worthwhile item to give somebody now interestingly enough this is an item that was first patented uh, the application was in 1973 and as you'll see behind me it was uh given a patent in 1974 for a handheld sewing machine and i think it's worthwhile looking at you know how that's gonna whether these things actually work they still sell them now i um you see that i've set up two cameras one is the camera my iphone that's looking down here that i normally record with and the other of course is my computer screen so you'll see i'm going to bounce back and forth but i figure i'll take you right through uh, as i as i go through this so i'm going to cut this open um, it does show on the back it shows um that you can use it everywhere that it does um operate with four AA batteries, which are not included. So I'll have to actually go grab some AA batteries from the other side of my office. Works on all types of fabric. It says it includes three bobbins, two needles, a needle threader, and a spindle. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see um, how that works. And you'll notice that it already does have actually thread on the bobbin, so we don't have to worry about that. And you figure if you're gonna give this to somebody who, um, who doesn't have a sewing machine, a regular sewing machine, they're probably going to need those things. They're going to need it to have um, already have bobbin with it. Now, of course, you do need to notice that it did say you have to have AA batteries. So if you're giving this as a gift, I, I think it's a good idea that, you know, especially when you give, like, Christmas gifts to children, make sure you check and see if there are batteries required. That's, that's one of the worst things about getting a gift and then finding out that you don't have great batteries. So we'll open that up. There is the device. And then in the box, there are a couple of more things. Um, it has a spindle here, two pieces. It has an extra needle here that's in a piece of uh, cardboard. That spindle, not sure what you're going to use that for, but we'll hold on to that. The two extra bobbins, which is great, already pre-round. Wow, that's nice. And a needle threader in there, which is very unusual. And then the little guide that tells you about the sewing machine. And uh, it, apparently the instructions match how big the sewing machine actually is. So it says, lock the portable sewing machine to position the needle, the thread correctly. Lock the machine. Well, we'll figure out where you do that. Oh, it's right here on the top. It says lock, unlock. So you see it at the very top. It's a lock, unlock button. The user should locate the bobbin holder on the side. After pulling off the bobbin holder and spring underneath it, slide on the bobbin. After carefully positioning the spring over the hole for the bobbin holder, slide the bobbin holder and bobbin into place. Well, that's already on here, so but I'll still take it off and show you what I mean. You're gonna pop, well, It does say to, oh, I have to lock it first. So did I lock it? Lock and unlock. Lock goes forward. Okay, so, so you don't accidentally push the button down and run it through. Then you're going to locate the bobbin holder on the side after pulling off the bobbin holder and the spring underneath it. Obviously the bobbin would not be on here, but I have to pull off that bobbin holder. There you go, like that, pop that bobbin holder off and the spring underneath it. After pulling off the bobbin holder and the spring underneath it, slide on the bobbin. Okay, so I'm gonna slide on the, although the bobbin doesn't fit on there. Maybe it wants you to slide the bobbin onto the holder. Okay, I did that. Then I put the spring back around, over the, put the spring over the hole in the bobbin holder, slide the bobbin holder and bobbin into place. All right, that's been handled. Okay, threading the portable sewing machine is next. Do you see that? Threading the portable sewing machine. 
Lock the portable sewing machine. The thread goes from the bobbin through the first thread guide on the needle arm through the two plates in the tension control and through the second thread guide at the end of the needle arm. The user should use the provided needle threader to feed the thread into the eye of the needle. Uh, okay, so I'm going to run the thread up just like it did here already. You'll see it's already done right up through here. And then we go through the R, the, that's here, the tension, right? I'm gonna hold the bobbin down so I can do that. Go through that and then it needs to go through the needle. Ooh. This might be hard to see it in there, but there's a hole in the needle and the hole is from the front to the back. So it doesn't say what the thread should run out the front or the back. Um, that's interesting. It says, after feeding the thread through the threader and the eye of the needle, turn the rotor wheel once so the thread goes underneath the machine's fastening plate. User should lift the fastening plate, that's here, and use the seam ripper to pull the thread out from underneath. Well, they didn't give us a seam ripper. No seam ripper given to us, so we'll figure it out. So I'm going to go ahead and use the... I don't know if it goes through the front or the back. Huh. All right, I'm gonna assume that I put this through the front, through the needle, the hole in the needle, which I've done. And then I'm gonna thread the thread behind it. See how I've done there? And then I pull the threader out and then I'll thread it. Okay, so that threads the needle. Okay, then I'm going to turn this, it says. Well, isn't that supposed to? This is the rotary wheel. Turn the rotary wheel once, it does nothing to feed the thread through. I'm just gonna lift it like this and pull it. I'm gonna assume I just haven't done it right. And I'm gonna trim this thread right here because I think that needs to come off. All right, I've run it through. I have no idea if I've done that correctly, but I've run that through. And so now I'm going to pause for a minute and go get some batteries. See you in a second. Oh, I have batteries. I got batteries. Okay, so we're going to put the batteries in here. And I will follow the instructions. They're printed inside, so it's a little hard to see right now, but I can see them. So I will follow those instructions and put them through the right way. And now... Operate the machine for 10 seconds, then pause for five seconds. It can be used again regularly. It's a little strange to think about. Make sure the machine is locked. Raise the needle arm to the highest position by turning the rotary wheel. Note the rotary wheel can turn in either direction. Lift up the fastening plate. Place cloth underneath the fastening plate. Uh, okay. Um, let me unlock that. Okay, it does turn, look. And if I turn this now, it does actually start to work. Look at that. Oh, impressive. Okay. Well, it appears to have worked a little bit, so that's great. That's good to know. I am going to use the thread, the threader here to pull the thread out. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try it on a real basic fabric. I don't wanna do anything crazy. I just have some, I just have a, a piece here of of a really simple, um, this is a, oh, I can't even think of the word. It's a pillowcase. So I'm gonna try it on a pillowcase. So I meant to lift up that piece there. I'm gonna put the thread underneath. And it doesn't say, it says, let's see. 
Hold the portable sewing machine with the right hand and operate power switch with the thumb, other fingers supporting the bottom. Unlock the machine, press the power switch with your right thumb. The machine will feed the cloth to the left in the proper tension automatically. Nice, use your left hand to hold the cloth and control the direction. Do not rush machine. With wider stitches required, pull cloth to the left a little faster when sewing, so it's not variable at all. After sewing is finished, raise a needle arm by turning the rotary wheel. Use a seam ripper or scissors to pull out the thread about three inches and cut it. All right, so I'm gonna hold this with my right hand just like this, and it's gonna feed it to the left. Make sure it's unlocked. I'm gonna tell you what, <laughs> it's actually feeding. It is actually feeding and it is putting a stitch. Okay, this is a little crazy because I've always thought these were dumb machines, but I'm gonna keep going. Just gonna let it feed on its own or I'll pull it to get a longer stitch. Now it does say don't go for more than five seconds at a time. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and roll my, my rotary wheel here to get it all the way up. I will lift, it's a little weird to have to lift it this way. Lift that and pull this fabric out as it says to do. The fabric is kind of stuck. It keeps getting hit by the, oh, there we go. Kind of snapped the thread off on its own but look at this look at that stitch i'll show you on the back side it's gonna be hard to see on this fabric but i'll pull out a different fabric and show you with a little darker fabric look at that look at this and i'm gonna tell you that's actually pretty good i'm, I'm worried about how i'm gonna get it out of that fabric now because i was only using that as a sample let me grab another piece of fabric because i really want to show you how well this works on fabric that you can see it Ooh. So I have this fabric here. This is just a piece of, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's actually a fat quarter of fabric. Wow, I'm actually a little surprised by how good this works. So let's go ahead and just um, stitch this here. I'll stitch right along this edge, just to get, and this will be nice, you can be able to see how really well this is done. So we lift it, remember we lift that up and put our fabric underneath. Now, obviously, this would help if I were going to like, draw a line where to go. And obviously, I'm not doing a very, very good job of following a line. And I'll go ahead and keep rolling it up so that it gets out of the way. So that needle is out of the way. Then I can lift up the fabric piece and... and get it loose from there. And it kept, keeps snapping the thread, but I think that's actually okay. If I really was wanting to be more careful, I would try to do more with that. But look at the seam that it created. It actually creates a relatively thick, se strong seam. Now the difference is, of course, now look what happens here. For whatever reason, it didn't grab the first couple here. And as we go down, like it's not as perfectly tight seam, right? But at the same point, I'm not exactly, this is like for a temporary thing. This is if you're fixing a hem and a pair of pants or something. I have this nice stretchy fabric I wanna show you on. I wanna practice on this particular fabric. And I will just go ahead and seam this as if we were putting in, you know, like a pair, like a, 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 um, a hem in it. This is just a, a nice stretchy, now this is a stretchy fabric for a shirt. And I wanted to do this kind of fabric because I wanted to make sure it would handle this kind of fabric. But also uh, I wanna see how well it handles the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna up the tension a little bit. I wanna see if that has any real effect on it. Maybe it'll make it a little bit stronger. Okay, what I wanna see is how well it works with stretchy fabrics. Oh, it doesn't like stretchy fabrics at all. Look what it's, it's eating it in here. In fact, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to, um, yeah, it's literally eaten the fabric. Look, it's put a hole actually in my shirt. Look at this, an old shirt. I'm not too worried about it. And that was on the back anyway. So not good on stretchy fabrics. This is not gonna work for um, for like spandex. So don't do it. But let's look like if we were hemming pants. So I have just a standard pair of pants here. And um, I'm just gonna pretend that I'm gonna hem these. <coughs> and um, I'm gonna hem them backwards because I'm just gonna take the stitch out. 
because these pants are already actually shortened to my relatively short stature already. But if I were gonna do them this way, let's see how well it works. So I'm gonna hold it with my right hand, just like before, place that in there, lift that foot, Then lift the sort of presser foot there. And it tells you to roll out so much thread, but see what's happening back there? It gets caught down inside there. And so, because that's part of the process of how it works. So the, the, this pulling out three or four inches of thread is probably not the best strategy. And these are garbage scissors. Okay. So let's see how what that does in terms of a seam. I mean, again, you'd probably have to adjust some tension and other stuff, but that actually looks... Like it does a decent job. I mean, here's what you're using this for. I mean, I think you're using this for those times when you're like, oh, I have to get a hem accidentally fixed. I don't think you're carrying this thing around so that you can make quilts and other stuff. Like if you're using this to actually do any real sewing, I mean, I think you're gonna be a little disappointed. But the fact that for $8, this has feed dogs in it. You see the feed dogs down there? They're actually feed dogs in it. And it actually feeds the fat. I thought I was just gonna have to like stretch it along. The fact that it comes with pre-wound bo bobbins, that it has some tension, that it actually includes a plug here so you can plug it in to power it without batteries. Although it didn't come with one, but you could find one for another item. The last thing I'm gonna try is a pair of, oh, I just lost what I was doing. Um, the last thing I'm gonna try is a pair of jeans. Cause I figured that is the real test of whether or not you can actually sew anything really substantial with this. So can you actually hem a pair of jeans or mend a pair of jeans with this? And of course, remember, you only have this much throat space. So, um, you know, you got to look at that when you're thinking about how much, how, what, where you're sewing, because you might not be able to get into an area. But if you're doing, fixing a crotch in a pair of jeans, a pair of pants or, or hemming a skirt or something, temporarily hemming, I think this actually works pretty well. Um, I think you could hem curtains with this without it being a problem and probably never you have to worry about it later. So I'm going to go ahead and hem this to where you can see it. Lift up my presser foot and start sewing again. Now it's getting a little hard to go through. Um, and I think that's because it's just very thick fabric and I'm pulling it through and this is the heavy part that's through here. So it's working, but I'll go ahead and take that out. Open this up by pulling on the side piece here and go ahead and pull my stuff out of there. Now on the back, it's a little ugly. You'll see it's really put a lot of extra thread in and you'll kind of see how it's doing it without a bob and it's just one thread here. There's just the one piece of thread that's being used. There's no bobbin in the inside, but it's sort of doing a this sort of chain type stitch at the back. And I mean, look, it really did. It hemmed my, my jeans. If I needed them hemmed quickly, I could actually do that. So that is this um, portable sewing machine that I bought from, uh, from Ollie's, the discount outlet, and it was only $8. And you can buy them online and other places. Singer makes a version. I am surprised that it was actually useful. So let me tell you who I think this would be good for. I think it's fantastic for people who don't sew. Honestly, I would just rather have my sewing machine. I don't, I don't, I can't imagine the time I would use this unless I was on a trip where I could only take a carry-on bag and I was like going to someone's wedding and I was worried that maybe somebody's pants would rip or tear or a dress would come unraveled and they needed me at the last moment to use a machine like this and I didn't have time to use a needle and thread by hand. That's why I would use a machine like this. That would be very useful for it. <laughs> I think in terms of for people who don't really sew a lot yet, this is actually kind of cute and could be used for them just to make the very basic projects. They think they want to start making pillows or curtains and you want to offer them the opportunity to do that. Well, you get this for the grandkids or somebody else and you show them how to use this basic device to make those things that are fun, but maybe not necessarily have to be perfect. Because we all remember our first projects and they were pretty bad. <laughs> so this would at least let you put stuff together 
and try out ideas without having to lug out a big machine or teaching somebody how to use a gigantic sewing machine because this is a lot easier. I'm really surprised that I liked it so much for $8. Uh, I think you will too. So uh, pick one up for a friend, friend or a family member or for those times where you can't just pack a machine but you still need something to do the basic stuff. I think you'll be really impressed. All right, until next time, stay crafty. Bye for now. I, I think I might actually use this for something. I didn't think I would ever say that. Man, I've been a snob for 30 years.